The winner of the Gibraltar Open Tournament 2018 is Levon Aronian. He has been on fantastic form over the past year or so. And um, yeah, he finally won. There was there was a pile up at the, the top of the tournament and he finally won a playoff, a blitz playoff against Maxime vachier le a bit of a repeat of uh, their World Cup battle. I wanted to show you a game that Aronian played against Nigel Short. And I think this game shows how creative Aronian can be. What an exciting player he is, very original. C4 from Aronian. So with white, he generally doesn't follow kind of E4 or D4 main lines. I think C4 gives more rein to his creativity. And Nigel likes to play aggressively, and that's what he's done with this uh, e5 and f5 setup. Now you can play d4 here, but uh, Ronin plays g3, um, a system that he's played before. And let me show you this is a very clever idea behind this move. Now Nigel played knight c6, but what happens if black plays normal move knight f6. Well, here's Aronian's idea. d4 and then knight h4 and that pawn on g3 makes room for the knight to come in to f4. So let's see how this works out. This is the idea. So it, it's a bit like a French defense with colors reversed, you can see with this pawn chain here. And white has excellent control over the f4 square. And now this knight bounces round and position it, it's beautiful. And the pawn comes to h4. So white, and in all likelihood, this bishop will be traded off for the knight or the bishop at some, some moment. But with the knight on f4 and pawn on h4, white is completely secure on the king side. And then will turn his attention to attacking on the queen side, perhaps with moves like this, perhaps with b4, b5 later on. Very clever idea. Aronian played that against Bartel in the, um, I, think it was, I think it was the Blitz World Championship in Berlin 2015, rather than the Rapid. But instead of knight f6, Nigel played knight c6, and now d4 anyway. And after e4, Aronian flicks in d5. Now, if black trades on f3, then positionally, this is actually very nice for white because that pawn is so ugly on f5, blocking in that bishop exposing the king a little bit as well. I don't like it when f pawns have advanced. Um, they can often compromise your own king position. Looks good when you're attacking, but when it all falls apart, not so clever. So after d5, Nigel played knight e5. So we have a trade here. And already we have a very unbalanced position, and this is the kind of position that uh, Aronian yeah, really is able to, to show his, his uh, originality. And here he played g4. Now, he's actually played in exactly the same way before against Ivanchuk in Leuven 2017. I think this was a blitz game. And Ivanchuk wanted to hold those pawns together, but he found himself really under fire on the king side uh, after this and bishop here and bishop h5 and Aronian won a really nice game so you can see once again the king somewhat exposed once the f pawn advances so after g4 instead of g6 nigel had obviously prepared this and he played bishop c5 setting up some potentially some kind of attack here oh I should sorry before I before I move on with that I should mention that if pawn takes then I mean the idea is of course for for white just to gain control over e4 and it's going to take here at some moment and positioning that looks nice of course with this nice foothold in the center for white 
So, coming back to the game, I beg your pardon. Bishop c5 played by Nigel, his improvement or novelty, or whatever. Queen b3, threatening check here to win the bishop, so therefore knight f6. And, and Aronian plays this move anyway. Obviously, knight d7 holds the bishop. Um, but this clogs up white, uh, black's pieces just for a little bit. That's the idea. Now, if pawn takes pawn, then the queen comes to h4, and that is a bit annoying. Therefore, Aronian plays pawn to h4, stopping the queen coming into h4, but, and well, it can be a very useful move anyway, as we're about to see. But yeah, what an extraordinary position we have on the board after just 11 moves. So there is point to these pawn advances. In fact, it's in some ways it's quite positional, what white is doing. Nigel knocks away the queen, comes back to b3. And now if a normal move like castles, then white can take. And well, if rook f5, then knight e4. Um, you can see that that knight gives white tremendous control. It's a nice position. So e3 from Nigel. He's trying to stir up complications here. And then he takes on g4. But still, Aronian has nice control over e4. But at least that can be challenged by this knight. Now, you don't want to trade. You want to maintain control over e4, of course. And Nigel castles. So he's going to king to safety. And, well, this is interesting. I, you know, I would probably have just castled queenside very quickly here. But instead, Aronian very bravely actually plays c5. Of course, it, you know, it looks like a, the move that we would like to play. Um, these pawns look very nice together and, you know, maybe we can push with d6 at some moment. But I think I'd have castled first. Um, if knight d5, I should say that then white wins a piece with knight c3. Um, and if c6, we've got e4, of course. And pin and win again. So after c5, Nigel steps to the side with his king. He plays king h8. And castles. But it's funny, you know, yes, they look very nice, these pawns, but it is, it does create some kind of instability in white's position, but Aronian has judged that he can get away with this. Now Nigel brings out this bishop to f5, um, and we'll see that creates problems. Um, a rook b8 might be a better move. And, you know, maybe the bishop can just go to d7 and the pawn is protected. I mean, maybe later on we can try and break with, with b6. That's a possibility. But, I mean, overall, I think white's position is certainly preferable to black's. But it's still very unclear, actually. Because, it, you know, there's so much imbalance in the positions. Often it's very hard to control events. Bishop f5 played. And the knight comes back. Bishop retreats to g6. But this gives white exactly what he wants. So if the bishop goes back again, then this h-pawn has really done a superb job. Obviously, just opening up the king. So clearly, black would want to keep the h-file closed. But that means this diagonal is now open. And that's really not very pleasant. Um, in fact, queen takes b7 is possible. And these pawns offer very good cover. Um, it's, it's actually very hard for black to get things going when those pawns are there. And at some moment, white is going to get a big hit 
on this diagonal. This is the problem that just trying to get some kind of counter attack going for, for black is very difficult when there's always this, always this terrible insecurity on the diagonal down towards the king. So after h5, this is the game continuation, instead of retreating the bishop, Nigel decided to give up a piece and throw the rook down to f2. And this is, this is a bit scary, of course. Bishop attacked, pawn attacked. So Aronian decides, I mean, this is incredible, decides to put the bishop back on f1. I mean, not a beautiful square. You know, how many people would have the confidence to play a move like that? Actually, it's definitely a best move because it just keeps that rook shut out means that black's pieces don't get through to white's king. Remember, you know, if black does get some kind of counter-attack, it could be rather strong with that bishop cutting off the king's retreat into the corner. So let's see. Queen f8 attacking the pawn. Very interesting. Um, Aronian decides just to give that pawn and brings the knight back. I mean, this is very coolly done. He knows exactly what he can get away with giving up. Um, and he's doing this simply to maintain some kind of nice coordination in his position. So obviously, uh, Nigel doesn't want to trade queen, so the queen comes back. And now here's the point, e4 blocking out that bishop that's quite important check and now the king can step to safety at the side of the board and you know the queen protects the knight and there's still no way through for that rook crucially so although the bishop on f1 well, is very passive for the moment it actually performs a really important defensive task Rook g1 holding the knight and that means that now e3 is possible so the queen was protecting the knight now the rook performs that function and here well the bishop finally emerges and actually white is consolidating now so obviously d6 was threatened there because the bishop was on the same diagonal as the rook and now Aronian starts to move forward. Um, the queen activates, wants to take here. And after b5, he throws in knight f5. So that blocks out the rook so that now queen f8 mate is threatened. Nigel advances his pawns. This is really his only trump left in the position. He needs to get these going, but actually Aronian controls things extremely well. He's obviously calculated this out perfectly. So the queen hits the rook. And now the bishop comes back again because this rook is now in trouble. If the rook goes to f3, for example, the rook is trapped. Or the rook going to h2, queen g3, uh, which it looks pretty nasty. I know the rook can come over here, but... We've got queen e5. So after bishop f1 attacking the rook, short just gave it up. But now he is a whole rook down and the game didn't last much longer. The pawns aren't really very threatening. Queen b4. And here short decides to resign. These pawns are just too vulnerable. After g3, rook h1 and... White is a rook up, those pawns are dropping, and then it's time to attack the king. Well, a wonderful game from Aronian. He's so cool in these kind of tricky positions. And, well, it'll be very interesting to see what happens in the candidates tournament in March. And I think this victory in Gibraltar certainly confirms that he's one of the favourites for, uh, for the candidates.